Okay, so we are going to get started right now. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the NSF Regional Innovation Engines Program webinar. My name is Tiaga Nandagopal, and I'm the Division Director for the Innovation and Technology Ecosystems Division within NSF's recently formed the Directorate for Technology, Innovation, and Partnerships, shortly known as TIP. This new program that we are going to be talking about today is led by the TIP Directorate, together with participation from all the directorates across NSF. I want to thank you all for being here today. I also want to note that we have over 2,500 people registered for this uh, webinar at this time, and that, uh, we have more than 1,000 people already in the audience at this point. This is among the highest levels of participation for an NSF program webinar, and we are really, really delighted to see this level of interest from all of you. In this webinar today, we will be going through an overview of the Regional Innovation Engines program, including its motivation and goals, and how to get started with the proposal preparation and application process. We will then have an opportunity for questions. I want to highlight that you can ask questions using the Zoom Q&A feature that you can see at the lower uh, part of your uh, screen at any point during this presentation and also during the Q&A session afterwards. We also have additional opportunities to ask questions that we will highlight uh, towards the end of this webinar. Please note that this webinar is being recorded and the recording will be made available tomorrow on the NSF Engines program website that uh, we have just highlighted on the chat. In this slide, you can see the entire NSF uh, Engines program web team. You will be interacting with them over the course of the next few months and you will be hearing them from many of them today. Uh, and you will be working with them uh, on follow-up questions and, and doing upcoming office hours and in future outreach events. They are also accessible by email through the engines email in inbox, engines at nsf.gov. Before we dive into the regional innovation engines program, we will hear today brief remarks from Dr. Panchanathan, the director of NSF, and also from Dr. Irvin Gyanchandani, the assistant director of NSF's new TIP directorate. Hello everyone and welcome. It's my pleasure to join you today as we announce a bold new initiative from the National Science Foundation. NSF's Regional Innovation Engines program has been many months in the making and I'm excited to finally be able to discuss with you why NSF has decided to launch this program at this scale and at this time. This is a pivotal moment for our nation's STEM enterprise. Technological advancements are happening at an exponential pace and are rapidly reshaping our economic landscape. Since becoming the 15th director of NSF in July 2020, I have been developing and sharing a vision for the agency that will allow us to meet these challenges and seize the opportunities ahead. This vision has three core pillars. They are advancing the frontiers of research into the future ensuring accessibility and inclusivity, and securing global leadership in science and technology. The first pillar has been NSF's core mission since its inception over seven decades ago. By seeding strategic investments in both discovery-based, curiosity-driven, research and use-inspired, solutions-focused innovation, NSF continues to power discoveries and innovations that put the nation at the vanguard of science and technology. The second pillar focuses on ensuring accessibility and inclusivity in all STEM fields. Every community in every region across the country is full of talented individuals who can contribute to the nation's research and innovation enterprise. We must scale up existing on-ramps into science and engineering and create new pathways into STEM to ensure we are leveraging all the talent and ideas from everywhere across this great nation. The third pillar is securing America's global leadership in science and technology. Let me be very clear. This does not mean that America is a leader and all others are followers. It means that we are leading by our values of research integrity, 
transparency and reciprocity. And we are working with like-minded partners who share these values. Finally, the success of all these three pillars is built on a foundation of robust partnerships with every type of agency, industry, institution, and more. Society's most pressing challenges are interconnected and complex processes. More than ever, they require innovative, integrative, and multidisciplinary approaches spanning diverse industries, sectors, and geographies. To help NSF deliver on this vision, at speed and scale, we have created a new directorate for technology, innovation, and partnerships, or as we call it, TIP. The TIP directorate will accelerate the development of critical new technologies, quickly translate research results into practical applications, and promote the participation of a broad and diverse talent base throughout our research and innovation ecosystems. One of the first bold steps TIP is taking is the establishment of the NSF Regional Innovation Engines Program, a program of unprecedented scale and scope to support the entire lab to market pathway in every corner of the country. It is my sincere belief that this program comes at the right time to help the nation realize its untapped STEM potential and unleash the next wave of innovation. The Regional Innovation Engines Program will propel our nation forward, creating new technologies, addressing societal challenges, and powering the economy and jobs of the future. To hear more about NSF's TIP Directorate and the Engines Program, I would like to now turn it over to Dr. Irvin Gyanchandani, NSF's Assistant Director for Technology, Innovation, and Partnerships. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Panchanathan. My name is Erwin Gyanchandani, and I'm honored to be the inaugural Assistant Director for Technology, Innovation, and Partnerships at the National Science Foundation. It gives me immense pleasure to talk to you today about this new directorate. From addressing the impacts of climate change to providing equitable access to education and healthcare and broadband connectivity to improving U.S. infrastructure, the nation faces momentous challenges. At the same time, America's research and innovation enterprise is undergoing historic changes. The pace of discovery has greatly accelerated across all fields of science and engineering and the humanities over the last decade as a result of access to unprecedented amounts of data and advanced technologies. STEM researchers, science, technology, engineering, mathematics researchers, and students are increasingly passionate about channeling their work to address the problems that we face in our communities. And we've seen that over the last couple of years with the focus on the COVID-19 pandemic. And STEM talent is highly distributed across not just academia, but also government, private industry, including startups and small businesses, nonprofits and philanthropic organizations, civil society, and communities of practice. And this prompts the need for unique new partnerships that blend together expertise and resources. And those are just a few examples of how our communities are changing. NSF's new TIP directorate constitutes a once in a generation opportunity to hone in on those momentous national challenges, as well as the transformations in science and engineering, and to specifically strengthen and scale the fundamental research that will power future technologies and solutions. Most importantly, to achieve success, TIP must deepen the engagement of everyone everywhere in the pursuit of this mission. As the director noted in his remarks earlier, we have a responsibility to tap into the full breadth of the nation's demography and geography to infuse diverse thinking and perspectives into the design and development of new technologies and solutions, and into the interfaces between these advances and the broader society. Ultimately, TIP is about furthering NSF's historic mission by strengthening and scaling our commitment to the interplay between foundational and use-inspired research to support the full breadth of research, innovation, and education that is necessary to meet the challenges of our time. The TIP Directorate 
will complement and enhance R&D investments across the entire federal government through its focus on scaling use-inspired and translational research. We will pursue new models, including vibrant public and private partnerships for technology and innovation that align with NSF's longstanding mission to promote the progress of science, to advance the national health, prosperity, and welfare, and to secure the national defense and for other purposes, and pave the way for transformative advances in technology and society. TIP will act as a cross-cutting platform that works collaboratively with all of NSF's existing directorates and with partners across government, private industry, philanthropic organizations, civil society, and communities of practice to be able to leverage, energize, and rapidly bring to society solutions from use-inspired research and innovation. In this way, TIP will fundamentally alter the narrative about our nation's competitiveness. We will grow the U.S. economy, especially in critical technologies and industries, and we will train a diverse workforce for future high-wage, good-quality jobs, thereby ensuring U.S. leadership and security for decades to come. Now, within this directorate, the NSF Regional Innovation Engines, or NSF Engines program, is a bold new initiative. We're seeking to catalyze innovation ecosystems across the entire country to advance critical technologies, to address societal challenges, to nurture diverse talent, and to promote economic growth and job creation. With the potential for each engine to receive up to $160 million over more than 10 years, the program supports the development of diverse coalitions of regional stakeholders spanning academia, industry, nonprofits, government, civil society, and communities of practice that will all work together to engage in use-inspired research, the translation of research results to society, and workforce development. Our ambition here is to foster a paradigm shift. Rather than an emphasis on pushing research results, including new technologies, out of the laboratory and out into the market and society, we'd really like to encourage the market to inspire research questions and specifically to draw out research results. That is, this market pull dynamic will enable the beneficiaries of research to motivate that work and thus become invested in seeing it translated and realized in society. Along the way, we'd also like to positively impact the research enterprise as well. We want to encourage flexible, cross-organizational and cross-sector appointments with seamless transitions. I'm thinking of professors of practice here. And co-mentoring of students by academia and industry and others. We want to encourage workforce development at all levels, giving rise not only to future researchers, but also to practitioners, to technicians, and to entrepreneurs. We also want to encourage increased connectivity between researchers and the broader civil society in their regions and communities. The NSF Engines program will uniquely harness the nation's geography of innovation and unleash a new era of innovation and competitiveness for our country. Through this program, we really are seeking to grow partnerships across all sectors, fostering blended teams that work collaboratively to inspire research questions, pursue co-design and co-creation of new technologies and solutions, and accelerate the translation of research results to society. We're looking for this program to serve as a catalyst for growth in the overall region. Each engine should serve as a magnet that draws in additional resources and investments from other economic stakeholders in the broader region and thus create a virtuous self-sustaining cycle of innovation and growth. Now, you're going to be hearing more details of this program from the team of program directors who have been working tirelessly over the last year to develop this idea. And I want to take this opportunity to truly thank them for their efforts. And with that, it's now my pleasure to hand this over to Dr. Dimitri Perkins from the NSF Engines program to conduct the rest of this webinar. Thank you, Erwin. Before we start, 
We want to emphasize that everything we will discuss here today is explained in much more detail in the Regional Innovation Engine's broad agency announcement, which is the funding call for this first iteration of the program. It can be found online at the link you see on this slide. As we speak today, we will be highlighting select portions of the BAA to explain the program, uh, which we refer to as the NSF engines for short. Note that if there, if, if there is a discrepancy between what we say here and the language in the BAA, please follow the BAA's guidance. Here's a roadmap for our presentation today. First, we will provide an overview of the NSF engines program. Then we will discuss how to get started in forming an engine. Uh, next, we will dive into the proposal application process. And finally, we'll wrap up and have a live Q&A with the NSF engines program directors. So let's start with the overview of the program. As Irwin highlighted, the way that NSF plans to enable these new innovation ecosystem, ecosystems is through funding a set of entities called engines that will drive R&D and innovation, both in terms of advancing critical technologies and with an equal emphasis on developing local talent and the related workforce. Each NSF engine will be centered around a specific geographical region of service and each will focus on a selected topic area of national and societal significance motivated by the region's strengths and its regional economy. NSF engines will be funded with up to 160 million over 10 years. Uh, we also have the opportunity for those that are not yet ready, for regions that are not yet ready to launch a full-scale engine uh, to have pursued developmental awards, and these awards will be $1 million for up to two years. The first deliverable for both of the submission types are concept outlines, which are due on June 30th. We will say more about these near the end of the webinar, but we want to call to your attention uh, right now um, as the deadline is approaching very fast. So what exactly is an engine? NSF envisions an engine, an engine as a coalition of partners and stakeholders coming together from a variety of sectors across industry, government, academia, and nonprofit organizations, and led by a full-time CEO. This engine coalition must be primarily made up of regional organizations who are jointly invested in economic growth of their region. Of course, they must also be interested in doing this through R&D innovation within their selected topic area. And additionally, they must be jointly interested in sustaining the engine long-term, as well as growing the region into an innovation ecosystem. To draw the distinction between an engine and the surrounding innovation ecosystem, imagine that the gear that you see here is an actual engine. Around it is a surrounding innovation ecosystem that includes a range of stakeholders. Over time, as the engine builds up its innovation capacity and activities, the innovation ecosystem will grow and expand alongside it. We envision each engine as having a set of characteristics that fall into three categories, two of which were mentioned in, on the previous slide. First is R&D innovation to achieve regional economic growth. Second is building inclusive innovation ecosystems that will thrive for decades to come. And third is flexibility in each engine's structure and activities together with accountability to NSF. So now I'll hand it over to Michal to start our discussion on the details of these characteristics. Michal. Okay, so we... We'll start out with the first category that covers the core activities that NSF sees as central to driving R&D innovation. The program will be looking for three types of primary activities in this area. The first is addressing R&D that is use inspired. This means that the specific R&D activities should be motivated by solving regional and national and societal challenges within the selected topic area 
And the engine's activities on a more granular level should be informed by the needs, interests, and vision of the engine's partners, as well as other relevant stakeholders in the region, with a focus on the economic drivers of that region, both those that exist today and where the region is interested in heading. The second is taking these uh, critical technologies and innovations that are developed and translating them to society through the creation of startups or small businesses or expanding existing businesses. And the third is comprehensive workforce development to meet the existing and future workforce needs for the innovations being developed. Here too, teams should consider the broad set of sectors and job types that are needed to drive R&D in its topic space and plan for the training and education of technicians, researchers, practitioners, entrepreneurs, and other community members. NSF sees these core activities as complementing each other and recognizes that engines may be at a range of stages in developing these functions within their proposed engine. Again, underlying the ability to drive innovation is a set of robust partnerships that we touched on earlier. We want to discuss now in more detail NSF's vision around what it means to have robust regional partnerships. The program envisions three ways for organizations to participate. The lead organization must be regionally based and host the CEO. This organization will be the one to submit the proposal and ultimately be accountable to NSF and receive the funds from NSF to distribute to all other partners. Core partners will be the ones to uh, receive or contribute significant resources, have members who are part of the engine leadership and visioning, and they also should generally be regionally based. The engine will also be comprised of a broader set of other partners who may also receive or contribute funds. And most importantly, they are part of the larger ecosystem that's needed for the engine to thrive. These additional partnerships are expected to evolve and grow over time as the engine evolves. In developing partnerships, teams are strongly encouraged to consider the skills and expertise that are required for their particular engine and to think broadly about which sectors and which organizations would be best matched for those purposes and what the value proposition is for each sector and the partnering organizations. In the context of institutions of higher education, we want to specifically note that the program sees as essential to the success of engines the involvement of minority serving institutions, such as historically black colleges and universities, Hispanic serving institutions, and tribal colleges and universities, as well as two year colleges, community colleges, vocational and technical colleges, and other similar types of institutions. The expertise and perspectives of these various institutions will be critical for establishing an innovation ecosystem and accelerating the economic growth of their region. So now on to the second category, building an inclusive innovation ecosystem that will thrive for decades to come. So the ultimate goal for each engine and for the program as a whole is for the engine to become self-sustaining and to catalyze a broader innovation ecosystem within the engine's region of service. NSF envisions four elements in terms of thinking about a sustaining an engine long-term. The first is sustaining the engine financially beyond the period of the NSF award. We'll touch on this characteristic on the next slide. Second is developing a culture of innovation. This starts from the leadership of the engine and will require involvement from all of the participating organizations. This may be a culture shift for some of the involved organizations, as this will require the engine to function more with a startup mentality than any individual organization may be accustomed to. For example, it may involve allowing for an appropriate level of risk taking, moving at a sufficiently fast pace, shifting the focus of a project based on stakeholder input, creating an environment of open knowledge sharing and sufficiently incentivizing the participating individuals. Third, engines are expected to embody a culture of diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility, which we'll refer to as DEIA from now on. Throughout its engine leadership, all aspects of the engine's functions and activities and the associated distribution of funds to the participating partners and organizations that will allow for success across the engine. The program does not see DEIA as a separate piece to be worked on and tracked in parallel, 
But instead, to be a successful, thriving innovation ecosystem requires a focus on this from the onset of the engine and throughout its growth. To be clear, we consider DEIA to be an intentional practice of creating an inclusive engine where partners actively work to understand, respect, and value the range of perspectives and use those to strengthen the engine as a whole. And to emphasize this point, again, in the context of institutions of higher education, the NSF Engines program expects that minority-serving institutions, community colleges, and all other institutions of higher education in a given region will have the opportunity to participate fully in regional teaming and brainstorming for engine proposals and will ultimately be part of engine proposals, as it makes sense, taking on leadership and strategic planning roles and receiving the appropriate level of funding to effectively contribute to the engine. The fourth characteristic here, community wealth building, is to emphasize that the resultant ecosystem should be developed in a way that ultimately helps to grow the economy of the whole region of service. While this will only be realized well into or after the funding of the engine, NSF wants engines to consider this goal from the start. The diversity of an engine's partners should reflect the diversity of its community in order to best engage and serve the region's needs. Now to go a bit more in depth on financial sustainability. Engines should consider how to sustain themselves financially and build in structures to do so from the onset of engine creation. For example, teams should consider what partners from industry, philanthropy, government, and elsewhere should be part of the engine who have the interest and commitment to providing resources, especially financial, that would increase over the award period. Teams should also consider how to structure their engine in a way that will allow for new revenue streams from startups, products, and other places as the engine proves its own success. I will now hand it over to Daniel to describe the third category. Thanks. On to the third category. Flexible engine structures and activities with accountability to NSF. We want to highlight three characteristics of the engine design within this category. First, engines have the flexibility in determining their structure, which we'll elaborate on in greater detail in the next slide. Second is leadership. Building on the emphasis of the culture of innovation, engines will be led by a CEO or chief executive officer. The NSF title will be project director, rather than the typical NSF terminology of principal investigator, PI. But the role should function as a CEO. The CEO needs to be hired by the lead organization of the engine, and the team should carefully consider the expertise needed for this role. At the same time, the team should consider the structure of the rest of the leadership team and the variety of backgrounds and experiences that need to be represented on that. It should allow for true collaborative partnerships across the engine. The leadership team will not only be accountable to NSF, but also to the governance and accountability boards of an engine. Third is evaluation, which will involve an evaluation plan from each engine that will be further refined and negotiated with NSF at the time of the award. Now to say a bit more about the engine structure. So we've put forward a number of different ideas just to get you thinking about the set of partners and what they might look like and how this might be different than the things that you have done historically as an organization. So we'll start by walking you through one model and then we're gonna talk about several different models. As you can see here, there's a number of different organization types that can be at the center of an engine and be the lead organization. So first, let's start with the one on the left, a consortium of colleges. This could be a new entity or an entity that already exists. It could include a research institution, a two-year university, a community college, a vocational school, all working together as a lead organization. In addition, you could have other entities that are core partners. It could be a VC focus on the engine's topic area, a philanthropic organization that is passionate about regional economic growth, or about the topic area, a workforce nonprofit, a community college. These all can be a part of the vision. Additionally, sorry, one moment. Similarly, teams may consider other types of structures, such as those shown here, which are led by different types of organizations and have a different set of partners. For example, as you can see in these illustrations, engines be led by a new cross-sector entity, a university, by corporations or by other organizations. They can have core partners centered in the engine's region of service 
and beyond it in order to help achieve the, and advance its goals. The main point we want to consider is who needs to be a part of the proposed engine and in what way should these partners work together to achieve the goals of an engine and ultimately become a catalyst for a thriving innovation ecosystem in your region. Next, let's discuss how to get started in forming an NSF engine and the different pieces you will need to think through. In this portion of the webinar, we will discuss in detail, identifying your engine's topic area, region of service, lead institutions, maturity level of your region's ecosystem, and based on these factors, selecting the type of engine proposal you would like to submit. I will hand it over to Becky to get us started. Thanks, Daniel. Okay, so choosing an appropriate topic area is critical for the, uh, uh, a critical aspect for the proposal process. Uh, so teams should consider the underlying goals of the NSF engines program when selecting their topic area. For example, the topic chosen must address both a compelling national or societal challenge and be a good fit for the local regional economy. A topic must also be a good fit for your region, meaning that it must reflect the capabilities of the region, uh, for example, leveraging existing research or industrial activity and addressing regional needs. It's important that the topic be use inspired and that <clears throat> the R&D uh, be funded uh, the the R&D to be funded has the potential to make tangible progress with respect to addressing the challenge area and creating new business opportunities. It's not necessary that an ad engine address all aspects of the challenge area, but the problem scope should be clearly defined. Each engine needs to determine their region of service and be able to explain their decision. So there's no strict limits on the size of a region of service. Um, it could range from a single metropolitan area to several states. More important is the availability of appropriate partners and that the region be defined by its stakeholders and end users. It's permitted to include non-league partners or stakeholders from outside of the region of service if it can be justified in the proposal. Ultimately, a successful engine proposal will reflect the applications that are important to the local regional economy and will demonstrate clear potential to grow regional talent and create jobs in the region. When developing an engine proposal, you want to look for opportunities to collaborate on a strong regional proposal rather than competing with other regional organizations with multiple proposals addressing similar or related topics. It's, you know, it's a priority of the engines program to grow innovation economies in regions lacking well-established innovation ecosystems. In, in determining the eligibility to participate in an NSF engines award, uh, we distinguish three different categories. So we have organizations that could serve as the lead. You've got those that may receive funds through sub awards and those that may participate as partners but may not uh, receive NSF awards. And you can imagine these, uh, these categories are overlapping. For example, um, uh, some organizations may be eligible to submit a proposal but they may also be eligible to receive a subaward or serve as an unfunded partner. Uh, proposals may be submitted by US-based nonprofit, non-academic organizations, US-based for-profit organizations, and accredited US-based institutions of higher ed, but not their international branch campuses. <clears throat> Subawards may additionally be received by US federally funded research and development centers, national labs, and we want to specifically highlight that subawards may be received by state, local, and tribal governments limited to the agencies, offices, or divisions that are dedicated to innovation, economic, and or workforce development. The NSF Engines program uh, uses a five-phase model to envision the process of a region evolving into a mature innovation ecosystem. And so this model is used throughout the BAA um, and uh, to, to kind of outline the, the requirements for and expected outcomes of progressing through an award. So we're going to kind of walk through each of these phases. So during the development phase, the structure and scope of a region's innovation ecosystem are being established, concrete plans to create an innovation ecosystem are developed, the geographical region of the service is defined, the process of partnership building begins, and the initial commitments from partners and stakeholders is established. 
uh, in a nascent phase, an innovation ecosystem will have a defined set of partners, organizational structure, and planned innovation activities. The innovation ecosystems in this phase are going to be ramping up their innovation activities. Uh, so you may see um, the initiation of joint R&D activities, workforce training, etc. The emergent phase is characterized by scaling up the activities initiated in the nascent phase, beginning to translate the results of these activities into new products and services, moving trainees to the workforce development pipeline, generating uh, the external funding necessary to grow the innovation ecosystem. And then in the growth phase, this is where an innovation ecosystem matures into a self-sufficient economic ecosystem with significant support from government or for-profit entities, generating significant new businesses and providing a thriving workforce development pipeline. It's the goal of the NSF Engines program to grow innovation ecosystems from the development through the growth phases, creating mature innovation ecosystems that are self-sustaining and are national leaders in the engine topic area. In this first iteration of the NSF Engines program, NSF is accepting proposals for two types of awards. So teams should consider the maturity level of their innovation ecosystem, as well as their proposed topic area within the region of service, as they determine the appropriate award type for their team. So again, type one awards will be for $1 million for up to two years and are for teams that are not ready to launch an engine and need time to develop and grow both their concepts and their team. Type two awards will be up to, uh, will be up to $160 million for up to 10 years and will take teams from the nascent phase through uh, the growth phase of their innovation ecosystem. We're going to shift gears here a little bit um, and cover the NSF proposal application process. Um, in this section, we'll cover the application timeline, the NSF proposal and award policies and procedures guide, guidance for prospective new awardees, the application system, and what happens after proposal submission. So there are several steps to submitting a successful application. You must submit a concept outline, followed by a letter of intent, and then the full proposal. We're going to discuss each of these documents in more detail. Um, the first deadline for both type one and type two applications is the mandatory concept outline, which is due on June 30th. We want to emphasize that if you're considering submitting a full proposal, please be sure to submit a concept outline since this is a prerequisite to submitting the full proposal. All concept outlines will be published as part of the effort to encourage teams in the same region to consider whether it makes sense for them to work together in their proposal submission. For type one application, uh, sorry, for type one applications, letters of intent are due August 31st and full proposals are due on September 29th. Due dates for type two letters of intent and full proposals will be, will be announced at a later date. Applicants with accepted concept outlines will be invited to a virtual proposals day to be held on October, oh, sorry, August 1st. Um, and, and just to kind of highlight one aspect of proposals day will be for additional teaming opportunities among prospective teams who have submitted concept outlines. Okay, when preparing a proposal for the NSF Engines program, be, be sure to review the NSF proposal and award policies and procedures guide otherwise known as the PAPPG or PAPG. Uh, this document outlines all the rules for completing a proposal. It's divided into two sections. Section one includes the guidelines for proposal preparation. Section two outlines post-award policies, including monitoring of grants and cooperative agreements. So when you're writing your proposal, uh, you're gonna be most interested in section one of the PAPG. It's important to note that you must follow all the requirements in the BAA and the PAPG unless the BAA specifically notes a uh, deviation from the PAPG. In addition to closely reviewing the BAA for this program, organizations new to submitting proposals to NSF as a lead organization are strongly encouraged to understand the process well in advance of submitting deadlines. <clears throat> so this includes uh, registration in the federal government system of award management, reviewing NSF's prospective new awardee guidance. Uh, the link here is, is in the slide. And also reviewing the PAPG, which we just talked about in the previous slide. 
Uh, note also that the application systems for this program will be new to most organizations, including universities with significant experience submitting proposals to NSF. So we ask that all prospective applicants be sure to familiarize yourself with these systems and the requirements for submission well in advance of deadlines. Uh, so with that, I'm now gonna hand it over to Jeffrey to finish up this part of the webinar. Thank you, Becky. Uh, as, as Becky noted, submissions to all award types require concept outlines that describe the fit of the topic area of the proposed engine for the intended region of service. Concept outlines should describe the national and societal significance of the topic, the overall purpose and vision of the proposed engine, and how the proposed region of service is well positioned to create an engine. Refer to the broad agency announcement for details about the content and format of concept outlines. Teams should also be aware that more, than, uh, more information about the proposed engine is expected for type two concept outlines compared to type one concept outlines. <clears throat> All concept outlines will be reviewed internally by NSF program officers. An approval from a cognizant NSF program officer is required to proceed to the submission of a letter of intent and full proposal. In order to be eligible to submit an engine proposal, you must submit a letter of intent or LOI, regardless of the proposal type. Failure to submit an LOI will result in your full proposal not being reviewed. However, submitting an LOI does not obligate you to submit a full proposal. Note that the LOIs are used only for internal planning purposes. You will not receive feedback on your LOI other than the confirmation that it has been received. It's important that the project director and lead organization listed on the full engine proposal remains the same as those listed on the letter of intent. However, the rest of the team, senior personnel, partner organizations may change between the LOI and full proposal. The uh, BAA includes details about exactly what to include in the LOI. Next, we will discuss full proposals. The proposal project description is a section of the proposal where you describe the details of your proposed engine, and it should be written as a narrative. The BAA includes details of what to cover in this portion of the proposal. We'll note that it includes a required set of sections and subsections, including the overview, vision, and rationale of the engine, the proposing team, strategic plan, and management plan. Within this structure, teams should think back to the overall characteristics of an engine and use this space to describe their vision for building an, on R&D innovation to achieve regional economic growth, developing an inclusive and sustainable innovation ecosystem, and describing who will be involved, for what purposes, and how the engine will be structured, managed, and internally evaluated. The project description for type one proposals can be up to 15 pages, and up to 30 pages for type two proposals. Teams are also encouraged to review the specific review criteria outlined in the BAA when developing their project description narrative. The BAA describes the various other required sections in the proposal. Here we'll note several of these sections that are additional opportunities for teams to convey their vision and strength of their team. These are the facilities, equipment, and other resources. And within the supplementary documents, the letters of collaboration. For these letters, teams should understand that these are not support letters, but instead letters from the various partners and stakeholders who have committed to being part of the engine. Now we'll discuss the steps after proposal submission. The merit review process will evaluate proposals based upon the intellectual merit and broader impact specified by NSF's National Science Board and additional criteria described in the BAA. While the external review process is a key component of the NSF review process, final recommendations are made by the NSF engines team. The selection process for engine awards consists of both external review and for type two proposals, virtual site visits. The merit review process relies on evaluation by a panel of external experts selected by program staff for their expertise to review and discuss the merits of submitted proposals because of the unique nature of the engines program, reviewers will be selected by program staff, both for the technical expertise relating to proposed topic areas, and also for experience in workforce development, large scale collaboration and innovation ecosystems. Teams for type two proposals that are recommended by the NSF engines team for further consideration will be invited to participate in virtual site visits, at which they'll present additional information about their proposal, their proposed teams, and respond to issues raised by NSF staff. 
only a subset of proposals selected for virtual site visits will be recommended for awards. Because of the significant differences in complexity of write, both writing proposals in the selection process for type one versus type two awards, the expected start dates for these two categories of awards are significantly different. March 15th, 2023 for type one awards and a date to be announced for type two awards. Furthermore, the, award, uh, the program anticipates that many teams will not be ready to produce type two proposals. Consequently, the engines program anticipates making a relatively large number of type one awards, up to 50, with a modest number of type two awards up to five in this round of the BAA. The scale of the engine's awards in both time and NSF funds is considerably greater than most other programs. Furthermore, expected contributions for NSF engines in terms of workforce development, translation to practice, and business development go well beyond that of traditional NSF awards. Consequently, the NSF engines program will involve an ongoing collaboration between NSF staff and awardees to ensure that the engines created by this program have the greatest opportunity to build thriving innovation ecosystems and impact the economy of the region of service. For this reason, awards made by the NSF engines program will be structured as a type of grant called a cooperative agreement. This is an award that requires negotiation between NSF and awardees prior to the final decision. They will also involve a set of checkpoints and deliverables that specified in the agreements. For example, the agreements will specify how NSF will be involved in project activities and to what extent NSF will advise or approve engine activities. The cooperative agreements will define any additional deliverables required by NSF and the project evaluation process. It's worth emphasizing the word cooperative here. These agreements will be developed through negotiation with both NSF and awardees providing key inputs. Creating an engine's proposal is necessarily a complex task and rather than burden teams with all documentation required for award, but not necessarily for the review process, some documents will only be required post-award or will require a greater level of detail post-award. As previously mentioned, the NSF engine program will involve ongoing collaboration between NSF staff and awardees. This includes an annual review process, which in some cases will include a site visit by a team external to NSF. I'll now hand it over to Juliana to wrap up and start the Q&A. Awesome, thanks, Jeffrey. This concludes the presentation portion of this webinar. We will now move on to the Q&A portion of this event where members of the NSF Engines team will answer your questions. For more detailed information on the content shown in this webinar, please see the NSF Engines website and broad agency announcement. Additionally, if you have questions beyond those answered here, you can always email us at engines at nsf.gov or sign up for office hours with the NSF Engines program team or attend our other Q&A sessions. We'll also be posting a copy of this webinar on the NSF Engines program page along with FAQs. We have additional Q&A sessions along with a series of roadshow events that we strongly encourage prospective applicants to attend. The primary goal of the roadshows is to provide an initial teaming opportunity for potential applicant teams. We hope these will serve as a launching off point to look broadly for engine partners that span sectors. The roadshows will also feature presentations from individuals across the United States who have experience building innovation ecosystems. We hope these interactive regionally based discussions will bring stakeholders from multiple sectors, government, industry, nonprofits, and academia. But we need your help in building an inclusive mix of stakeholders. If you haven't signed up for your region's roadshow, please do so today. We'll paste the sign up information in the chat. If you've signed up, please share it with others in your network with a specific focus on people who come from different sectors than your own sector. We will now stop and start the, restart the recording and open up for questions. Please use the Q&A function on Zoom to ask your questions.